So with my presentation, I'm going to take you to um, a different area of linguistic, which is sociophonetics. So um, basically, today I'm going to pr be presenting my master's degree research paper uh, titled Evidence, uh, like uh, an empirical study on um, the effect of intrasentential code switching on vowel quality and duration. Evidence drawn from acoustic mm -hmm. analysis of Kabyle, which is Berber language, mm -hmm. and French bilingual speech production. Um, so, as you see at the bottom of the screen or the slide, this was like conducted in 2018 at the University of Leeds, the UK. Okay, moving to another slide. So, this slide basically explains why this research was needed. Uh, first of all, um, this, this study focused on the less studied aspects of the phonetics of code switching. Um, these are like vowel quality as shown on the slide, vowel quality and vowel duration. So they are like less studied in this area. Um, then after that, this study basically invest, it's the first was the first study that investigates the phonetics of French switched vowel in a typologically different language, which is Berber. Um, because the other, uh, like the, the previous studies, like focused uh, on like languages that fall under Indo-European uh, or Ramos languages. So yeah. Also, like this study uh, examined the phonetics of code switching in Kabyle speakers and Berber in general. So the first time, uh, I mean, the first study to investigate the speech production of um, uh, uh, these kinds of participants, I mean, who speak this language. Um, also, like this language completes the picture of vowel quality, uh, like investigated previously, by introducing and analyzing the vowel rounding, which is uh, measured using F3. And basically, our main question um, is, how does intrasentential code switching affect the vowel of the embedded language? Okay, a little bit of context. So, um, as a definition of code switching. So code switching occurs when people switch languages in a single situation within a single conversation and sometimes within a single sentence. So uh, situations where uh, code switching is common is immigrant families, as you see at the bottom of the, at the, of the slide. And also um, when native or indigenous languages coexist with other languages like colonial languages. And this is the case of the linguistic situation in Algeria. Okay, so some definitions of some key concepts. <clears throat> so in code switching, one language is dominant, uh, which is like the matrix language. It lays out the basis for the communication and the, the additional language as shown in blue um, is like it's the embedded language uh, uttered like when a uh, bilingual wants to add a word, for example, like, yeah, on top of the embedded language, uh, sorry, on top of the, the dominant language, which is the matrix language. So basically we have, so matrix language and embedded language. Okay, so um, there are at least three, <clears throat> three forms, uh, main forms of code switching. We have intrasentential, intersentential code switching, sorry. One bilingual switch the language for the entire sentence as shown on the slide. Um, and there is also intrasentential code switching. Um, this is, happens when the speaker switches language within a clause or sentence boundary. And then we have extra sentential switching or it's called also tag switching, which is like adding a tag from a language uh, that is inserted into another language. Okay, but of course this study focuses on, um, on the intra sentential form. Okay, okay, in case, I mean, I'm assuming most of you are not familiar with the, the language. So Berber language is spoken in the area shown on the map. Um, 
but in this study we focus on a variety as uh, spoken um, in Algeria, mainly in the area, the big area where the circle is. Okay, so the next slide. So what you see here is uh, the vowel uh, phonemes of French, standard French and Kabyle, uh, which is on the right, the Kabyle one. And uh, what I would like to show here is that French con contrasts like roundiness, like rounded and unrounded vowels, but not Kabyle. So this motivates our choice of the uh, of vowel rounding to study the vowel quality in code switching, right? Uh, please note, if you can see my cursor here, uh, like, please note that I will be referring to this as um, high rounded. And this vowel, these are the target vowels, like U, uh, 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 so the, this one, well, I will be referring to it as high rounded vowel, and this one as closed mid rounded vowel, and this one uh, as open mid rounded vowel. Okay, I'm going to go briefly through the literature of the phonetics of code switching. So, so the literature focused heavily on the segmental side of the phonetics of code switching. And the feature that attracts uh, the researchers more was the VOT as shown here. So VOT is the property of consonants, especially like mainly plosive consonants, like consonants like B, T, K, yeah, these are plosives. And uh, the major finding is that the duration in switched voiced and voiceless plosives is not affected by language switching. Basically, the bilinguals, when they switch from one language to another, they have this cognitive flexibility. So, yeah. So then, uh, however, less attention was um, given to um to vowel like to the investigation of uh, vowel um, uh, quality and duration so there had been two only two studies mentioned here that investigated the the vowels of uh, code switching so these studies um yeah, these studies basically, the first study was the one of Moodlener et al, 2017. So they recruited 10 participants who were English, French bilinguals. So they found out that no, there, there was no effect of uh, code switching on the backness and height of the, of the vowels and the duration as well. The second study, uh, the second study like recruited 12 participants, they are all competent in both languages, and uh, the languages were Occitan and French. Um, then, of course, the, the, the results show the, the kind of bidirectional transfer, like which means the vowel backness is affected in both direction. When you switch from L1 to L2, by L here, I, I mean language, uh, the first language L1 and the second language L2. And yeah, like it, it was bidirectional, like, um, yeah, the, the effect was found uh, in both directions. Okay. Um, okay, our main questions are the first one. <clears throat> okay, so we were interested uh, whether intracentential code switching uh, from Kabyle, the matrix language, to French affect the F3 values of French uh, vowels. And then we assume that French rounded vowels will be less rounded since Kabyle does not contrast round rounded vowels with unrounded vowels. So uh, does the, then the second question was, does intracentential code switching from Kabyle to French uh, affect vowel duration. So we assume that vowel duration will either remain stable or get longer due to the switch, short switch. Um, sorry. So to answer the questions, we recruited six Kabyle uh, French bilinguals, five females, one male. Uh, their age ranged between 25 to uh, 54 uh, years. Uh, then they were all university educated except one a resident in the in the UK at that time, the time of experiment. So they were all proficient in both languages, like L2, uh, Kabyle, and French. 
Okay. Oh, sorry, I missed this. Um, then, um, of course, like there were like uh, six vowels <laughs> analyzed, but we had like three front vowels. They were the target vowels and three point vowels like E, A, U as fillers. Um, then each inserted, um, each vowel inserted in 15 tokens. So which gave us 90, uh, 90 um, uh, to like yeah tokens like each condition and since we have two conditions monolingual and bilingual we got a total of 180 uh, per participant 180 tokens per participant so then uh, we used like four French career sentences and four Kabyl career sentences and um, yeah so all the vowels like were distribu distributed across different word positions like word initial medial and final okay then here uh, what um, the career sentences looked like so yeah how uh, they looked like the experiment, so we used like a quiet <laughs> recording studio to record the, the, the participant's speech uh, production. Then we, we used also like a um, reading task. So we had like two conditions. The first one, monolingual sentences, they were all French, like French in French. Then of course we used the second block. Uh, we used bilingual sentences. Oops. Yeah, and also the, the language were coded uh, using uh, flags, um, like you see in here. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we used, for the analysis, we used Pratt software to analyze the, 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 the tokens, and we had like total of 2,160 tokens, uh, like in total. So um, we also used like F3, um, we used F3 to measure the roundiness. And for the vowel duration, we segmented uh, them like according to the onset and offset of the vowel, like you see on the screen here on the spectrogram. Okay, the results. So overall result for vowel quality, we found no um, evidence, significant evidence uh, between the, 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 the vowels um, across the, the, the conditions, like the, the light purple uh, is non-switch condition and the, the dark purple uh, refers to switch condition. Um, the same thing when we looked, the same thing when we looked at the individual vowels, uh, no significant differences uh, across the conditions, except that the except that the closed mid vowel here approaches significance, right? It it it, it didn't really show the significant difference, but it, it approaches. Um, whereas the duration vowel duration, we did find um, overall uh, main effect, significant main effect, but. Um, So, so this is the overall, uh, um, uh, like the main effect of the, the, the vowel in terms of duration. So we did find because like in the vowels, like in the switched, the switched conditions became shorter compared to the uh, non-switched counterpart. But interestingly, when we looked at the individual vowels, we did find a difference, significant difference, just in one vowel, which is as framed here, um, which is the 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 open, um, yeah, the open mid vowel, right? Um, so discussion. So basically, for the first question. Um, Contrary to what expected, this study did not find a statistically significant difference in vowel quality, like vowel rounding. Uh, <clears throat> then we, we also raised the, the, the question of individual difference. Um, sorry, individual difference because like we had like three, uh, three, three individuals like that show a difference in, the, in one vowel but not the other participant, just half of the participants. So that, that, that was an interesting point to uh, observe. In terms of vowel duration, 
Um, well, we did find like main effect of code switching, but not across the board, not across the target vowels. So we explained that by uh, the fact that that could be due to um, phonetic context in which that vowel uh, uh, is used. And um, yeah, and also like overall, our um, results of the vowel duration showed like uh, different results compared to the previous studies. Um, as a conclusion, so basically uh, for the vowel quality, we did uh, code switching uh, didn't really affect the vowel quality. Um, uh, yeah, the vowel quality. And uh, there was like shift, but we could consider that as flexes uh, and are not considered as categorical shift. Whereas the vowel duration, maybe we assume that maybe the suprasegmental features are more sensitive to code switching than the, the vowel quality. And further research, this is my final slide. So uh, with the hope to take this study, uh, this research like uh, to further investigation. So um, uh, we, uh, it would be interesting to um, look at the uh, sample size. Like we, we hope to recruit more participants and like create this gender balance. Self-reported language information, we thought that systematic tests would show like a different pattern. And of course, uh, test the same questions like in spontaneous speech. And for the reading task, maybe we could change something in, in, in there. And it's important also for further research to focus on typologically different languages. And this brings us to the end. And uh, thank you. Merci pour votre attention.